Mr. Mark Loko, thank you for speaking with us. Let's look at DFID's involvement in Kenya and the larger East Africa. What are some of the areas of focus and how much have you given in terms of aid? DFID is the British government department responsible for Britain's contribution to international development goals. So we've been working here in Kenya a long, long time. At the moment, the total British development effort in Kenya amounts to £240 million a year, about $400 million a year. We're engaged across all the social sectors, health, education, water and sanitation, social protection. We work a lot on governance and security and conflict issues. But our big new focus and passion is supporting economic takeoff uh, in this region and uh, growth of the economies, the creation of jobs and new opportunities uh, as the region really does begin to take off. You narrow down on the business climate and investment into women and children. Why are these two a key focus for DFID? Well, the business environment is crucial for any country. All countries in the world, rich and poor, need to attract investment to grow their economies. And we have been engaged in supporting progress on the business environment, making it easier for investors, more predictable, get contracts honoured, uh, build skills so that employers can hire the people they need to conduct their businesses here in the region for a long time. But what we're encouraged by, especially over the last few years, is the acceleration that's taking place in the improvement in the business environment. And I think that's one of the big things that lies behind the uh, faster growth rates across the region. I think regional integration, uh, the countries working together, is also unlocking that greater growth potential. What of women and children? Well, in every uh, society, um, half or more of the citizens are uh, girls and women. And in every uh, developed country, it used to be the case that the opportunity and the potential of girls and women wasn't uh, unlocked in the way it could be. In my own country, in the UK, we've seen much greater participation during the course of my lifetime of women in the workplace. We've seen much larger numbers of girls go into tertiary education and into the professions. And I can tell you that that's one of the things that has led to uh, a lot of economic success in um, the part of the world I come from. And my point really is exactly the same opportunity is available uh, to this region as well for the benefit not just of girls and women, but of men and boys uh, and societies as a whole. And Mark, this came out during the panel discussion on how do you create a balance between investment in the business environment and investment in the social sector? Because some people feel that when you invest in the business environment, you know, the aid is wholly skewed into one project, while in the social scene, you know, it is kind of a blanket, you know, aid donation. So we have had a big focus on the social sectors, especially here in Kenya and the East Africa region over the last 20 years and beyond. And that has actually been very, very successful. There's been dramatic improvements in life expectancy, dramatic reductions in infant and maternal mortality, and aid has helped with that. Much larger numbers of children being vaccinated, uh, malaria prevention and diagnosis and treatment, stopping children especially dying from malaria, millions of people getting access to antiretrovirals. So all of those things have helped just in the area of health. I could say the same in education and water as well. But now is a moment, having achieved all that progress and recognising that we're not there yet on eliminating poverty, but we have made a lot of progress. Now is the moment to switch into faster growth of economies so that it can, countries can raise more of their own tax resources, finance more of their own development. You know, international development agencies are in a very unusual business. We're the only sort of business who have as their goal to do themselves out of business. Uh, over the last uh, five years, DFID has been able to graduate its programs in lots of countries in East Asia. I would like to see us get to the point where the countries of this region are doing so well that development agencies like us are no longer needed around here. And that's a completely achievable aspiration, certainly during the course of um, my lifetime. Looking at it future forward, is there going to be a period where Kenya and the larger East African countries are not going to be aid dependent, where you, know, you create capacity building for countries to be self-sustainable? Kenya absolutely can get to that level. I would be surprised if during the course of my lifetime, I mean, I'm hoping to live a lot longer yet, another 40 or 50 years, I'd be surprised if long before the end of that, Kenya hasn't got to the point where it has a different relationship with um, lots of today's rich world, a, much, a relationship based much more on partnership. And also maybe Kenya can play a stronger role 
even as it's begun to do in uh, the last few years, in helping some of the neighbouring countries who are not quite as advanced as you are and uh, you know, move along the, the development curve in that way as well as in other ways. Prime Minister David Cameron is expected in the country later in the year. What does this mean for DFID and the relations between Kenya and the UK? This is a very important relationship and partnership for uh, the government of the UK. The Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond was here in Kenya earlier in the year. The uh, Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs was in London last week talking again to the Foreign Secretary. Our leaders are building up a very strong relationship. We are absolutely thrilled to have received the invitation from President Kenyatta for Prime Minister Cameron to um, visit and we hope that we can put all the arrangements in place for a really great visit very, very soon. Lastly, sir, let's look at your support for Trademark East Africa. We are meant to understand you'll be making a trip to the port of Mombasa, looking at the efficiency of good clearance. Are you satisfied with the pace of development at the Mombasa port? Well, I'm really looking forward tomorrow in Mombasa to visiting the port. It's a long time since I was there and through the Trademark East Africa program, we have been helping get trade through the port much more quickly. It's now taking just four days as opposed to 15 or 21 days to get a container through the port in Mombasa. That, uh, together with much faster transit times from Mombasa up to Nairobi and then into the neighbouring countries, is accelerating trade. And all of this is contributing to rapid growth of Kenya's exports to the tune of maybe $800 million a year this year and every year. And that is how you get economic takeoff and better livelihoods and incomes and jobs and opportunities for the whole population. So I know the port in Mombasa from the time I was living here um, in the late 1990s has been a source of great frustration to lots of people. But I think something big and interesting and new is happening there and I'm really looking forward to it, uh, to, to seeing a bit of it tomorrow.